to understand why Rashi uses the term bishvil, a term that allows for the possibility of minimizing rather than maximizing the culpability of Bnei Israel with the making of the Egel, we will need to revisit Rashi's opening commentary to the very first Pasuk in Sefer Dvarim. The implied question is the significance of beginning the text with Ela HaDvarim, Asher Diber Moshe El Kol Yisrael, rather than Vayadaber Moshe El Kol Yisrael. Rashi then addresses a second implied question, namely the listing of seven locations that are obviously not synonymous with the location at which the Ela HaDvarim Asher Diber Moshe El Kol Yisrael took place. Rashi's response to this implied question is that the seven locations refer to events that Shehich Isu Lifnei HaMakom, that they, Bnei Yisrael, caused a degree of angst and anger before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Starvation in Shemot 16, Arava, the worship of Baal Peor, Musuf, the events of Yamsuf, when the people wished to return to Egypt, Paran was the incident of the Meraglim, and Chatzerot, the challenge of Korach, to the leadership of Moshe and Aharon. A rebuke differs from a complaint or a whinge in that the purpose of a rebuke is to effect a change in attitude on the part of the individual who is being rebuked. As a general rule, one who whinges, one who complains is backward looking, whereas the intent of the rebuke is forward looking. And therefore, when offering a rebuke with the hope of effecting change, one needs to at the same time taken into consideration the impact that that rebuke will have upon the recipient. There is a need to send a message that there has been some wrongdoing, but at the same time maintain the dignity of the recipient. And an effective rebuke requires a balancing between the two needs, the rebuke and the dignity. Rashi forewarns an implied third question, and that is, why didn't Moshe in his rebuke merely list the actual circumstances that brought about a disconnect between God and the people rather than mention a particular location and leave it up to the recipient to work out the content of the rebuke. To this Rashi writes, V'his kiram beremez mipnei kvodan shel Yisrael To maintain the dignity of the nation. He mentioned the various events beremez in an indirect manner. Satam et hadvarim these devarim, words of rebuke, were satam, spoken vaguely, v'hizkiram beremez, mentioned only in an indirect manner. Which brings us to the commentary that Rashi makes to the last of the seven rebukes, the Dizahav, in which we had earlier explained the need for Rashi to include the word hochichan. We will now address the use of the word bishvil, that, in light of the fact that Rashi quotes from Sefer Hoshea, Kesev here beiti lahem zahav asu lebal. The intent is a magnification of the sin for which Rashi's wording should have been hochichan al ha egel she asu be rov zahav, which is a statement of fact without any allowance for a justification due to external forces. And it is here that we see the precision with which Rashi has presented his commentary. These are words of rebuke, but at the same time there is the need to maintain the dignity of the recipient, in this case the Bnei Yisrael, and therefore Moshe Rabbeinu merely hinted rather than articulate the sins perpetrated by the nation. Similarly, with the sin connected to Dizahav, we have a rebuke, not just of the Egel, but as Hoshea points out, the use of God's gift for an anti-God experience. However, with the severity of the rebuke comes the need to maintain the Kvodan Shel Yisrael. This Rashi does by inserting the word Bishvil into his commentary, a word that allows for and hints at the extenuating circumstances that existed with respect to the making of the Egel, all in order to uphold the Kvodan Shel Yisrael.